Hello class, welcome to the lecture for 15.3. We have been figuring out how to solve polynomials up until now. Now we're gonna go the other way and we're gonna build polynomials ourselves. And I would like to walk through that in two steps. First, we're gonna figure out how to make them by hand and I'm gonna sneak in the topic of multiplicity. And then we need to figure out how to get them from data. Either nice regular data that will exactly fit or from horrible data that the calculator will get close for us. So, first of all, let's solve, uh, let's make, rather, a polynomial by hand. So suppose you knew that you wanted um, a polynomial of cubic degree, three branches, and you want it to go through the points one and negative two on the x-axis. So this means that if, if you want to go through one and negative two, you know that you can build something that will guarantee that result. That if we make a polynomial of x minus c times x plus d times x minus e and on and on and on, we could pick all the letters we wanted, that we know that when we plug in c into this, this term right here is gonna make a zero and anything times zero is zero. So these will all make zeros for us. So that will guarantee us that we go through that point. So in order to guarantee us that we go through the point one zero, we have to include x minus one. And if we wanna go through the point negative two, we have to include a term of x plus two. Because when you plug in minus two into that, you get zero. Now, you can see here that I've already picked these points where the ones, these factors were the ones that I wanted to include, these solutions. And I have squared this x minus one term. What do you think that that's gonna do? What would that do if it was alone? Well, if it was alone, if we were just looking at this term, we would know that we would go through the point uh, one zero and we would have this kind of squaring behavior. We would make a little quadratic there uh, like, like so. And this is still what we get locally when we zoom in really close. It will look like that, broadly speaking. But we also have to come over here and go through this uh, x uh, is equal to minus 2. So we still need to go through that point over there. So big picture, I know that this is what it's going to look like. How many x's do I have? Without even multiplying it all out, I can look and I can say, all right, so this is gonna get me an x, and then it's squared, and it's gonna get me another x, and this one over here is gonna get me an x. So all together, this is gonna start off with x cubed. That's gonna be the leading term. And then over here, uh, back at the first uh, term, if I have minus one and minus one, and a two, those are all my constant terms in my factors, and if I multiply that all out, I'm gonna get two. So I know, without having to do any of the long multiplication out, that this is gonna be x cubed, blah, 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 uh, plus two. That I can tell the leading term and the constant term just by looking at the x's and at the constant terms of the factors. And that all together, these have to make those two pieces given the factors that I started with. All right, so that needs to be done a bit more thoroughly though. Let's see what that would mean if we wanted to try to multiply that all out. And again, you don't have to multiply this all out to be able to put it in your calculator. You can just go ahead and put these parentheses terms straight in the calculator and it'll work. But for now, let's go ahead and multiply it all out. Well, this one is a perfect square trinomial. I know that that's going to be x squared minus two x plus one. And then this other term over here, that's, I mean, I don't have anything super special to say about that. It's just a binomial. So I'm setting these up in the same way that I set up regular multiplication. That if I had to multiply 576 by 24, I would multiply in this fashion. I would do four times each of these. I'd leave a zero and then I'd do two times each of those. And then I would add the ones, the tens, the hundreds on down the line. Same exact thing goes for polynomial multiplication. I'm just gonna multiply two times everybody and get two x squared minus four x plus two. And then I'm gonna leave a little gap right there and I'm gonna multiply x by everybody. And so that's gonna be x cubed minus two x squared plus two x. Okay, 
And so that now I can notice how neat, nice, and organized I am. This is a time when I'm really gonna stick up for the people who are obsessive compulsive, keeping everything neat, nice, and separated. Did you ever have those plates when you go camping that have the little ridges built into them, those little plasticky disposable plates that have the walls in them? And it stops the, the beans, the, the, the baked beans from getting on your hamburger bun. It is the greatest thing ever. All plates need to have those little ridges in it. Don't let your food touch. Don't let your food touch here. Keep your numbers and your X's and your X squareds and your X cubes. Keep them all neat, nice, and separated. So then you can see that the X squareds are gonna cancel and that is the polynomial, X cubed minus two X plus two. So there's how to multiply stuff out by hand. What we were saying about this beginning term here, how right off the get-go we had a uh, term that was x minus 1 squared x minus 2, that when you've got a term that is squared, then locally, if I zoom in right there, it does look like x squared in the vicinity of its solution. If you had something that was cubic, so if I, let's just make up one, if I wanted to say x minus 1 cubed times x minus 3, or x plus 3, then I would know that in the vicinity of 1, uh, I need to act like a cube. So a cube looks about like that, and then I need to go through over there. So shouldn't have done that little arrowhead, but then that is going to be, broadly speaking, the shape of that graph. And I can tell you that the, this is going to be x to the fourth, dot, 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 minus three. So there's an even more accurate graph. The point is, when you've got a, uh, an exponent on one of your terms in, when it's factored, that the graph behaves like that whole expression in the vicinity of its solution. So this is what is called multiplicity multiplicity, that the same answer, positive one, works three times in the answer. And if you were doing synthetic division, you would be able to do it three times and it work with a remainder of zero at that spot of x equals one. All right, so there's doing this by hand like that. You've got some factors, you've got some solutions, you're just multiplying them together. That's polynomial multiplication. But what happens um, most of the time in real life is that you've got some particular kinds of data that you want to, uh, to work. So for example, the, the book gives us a set of points and so I'm gonna go into the statistics function of the calculator and I'm gonna edit myself a new list and they have in the X's negative one, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six and then the corresponding y values are 80, 44, 38, 50, 68, 80, 74, 38. And this is on page 681 in the book is where I'm getting all of this. All right, so I wanna see what that data looks like. So I'm gonna turn a stat plot on and then I'm gonna do zoom number nine which is zoom stat. All right, so here I've got a bunch of data, and broadly speaking, I can look at this and say, aha, there are three branches. It's going up at the left and seemingly down on the right, so maybe a negative cubic function would be a reasonable expectation for this data. So I could go now to stat calc, uh, cubic reg right there and let the calculator find it for me, but they've purposefully picked this one to demonstrate another property to you. So you remember back in chapter seven, we said that quadrat quadratic data um, has X's that are being added and Y's, not that are being added, not that are being multiplied, not that have a common difference, but have a common second difference. So if you look at the difference in the, each of the y's, it would be a common, not the first difference, but the second difference. So 
the, the same could be extended to cubic functions, that they're going to have a common third difference. So let me show you how the calculator can show you the difference in data that you've got in a list in the computer. If you press second list over here under operations, there is choice number seven is delta list. And delta list says what is the difference between each of the terms in the following list. So if I give it L2, where we put all of our Y data, these are the differences in all the Ys. Well, there's no pattern there. But if I, the numbers start to look suspicious though, they all look like multiples of six. So now I'm gonna say, what about the delta list of the delta list of L2? So there's the, what is the difference of the difference in, differences in L2? And there again, I still got these sixes pattern there. There's something multiples of six-ish. So I'm gonna go for one more. I'm gonna do second list ops delta second list ops delta second list ops delta. So the difference of the difference of the difference of L2 items is consistently negative 12. So there's an interesting feature for you. The book wants you to be able to note how you could find particular points, uh, the difference between particular points of data that they have a common third difference for cubic functions. So that's one way, that's one way that that could work. We could also get data that is a bit more messy. So let me come in here and stat, edit, move up, clear, move up, clear. And let's put in this other bit of data that they want us to try. Here we've got two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then in the Y's we've got zero, 27, 24, 13, negative four, negative 11, six, 32. All right, so let's uh, zoom stat that. And again, we've got some kind of cubic function, but now let's go ahead and let the calculator do it for us. So stat calc cubic reg, and I'm lazy. I want it to go automatically store that in vars y vars function y1. And here we end up with a very messy bunch of details, but let's check the graph. And it goes through almost all of it uh, pretty nicely. So there's a good example of cubic reg. Lastly, and this is the most difficult of all, you could be given some data points at uh, the bare minimum. You could be given three points for a quadratic or four points for a cubic, and then to try to find the polynomial that goes through those can be very challenging. That's something that the, the calculator will um, maybe, maybe not be able to get you a decent picture of. So what do I mean? So it, on page 681, they give us six points. They give us 638 and 574 and 5... 250 and negative 180. So there's four points that you're trying to find obviously a cubic equation for. What's the generic form of a cubic? Well a cubic probably has um, a cubic term and a squared term and an x term and a number term but we don't know what the coefficients are so we'll have to call that a, b, c, and d. So there's the generic form of a cubic, just like the generic form of a quadratic is ax squared plus bx plus c. So what have they given us? They've given us at each point an x and a y, an x and a y, an x and a y. So we could say that if we plug in six, if we plug in this first uh, point over here, that six times six times six is 216a, and then x squared is, 6 squared is 36, and, uh, got lost there, and b, and c, and d, all somehow came together to make 38. And let's plug in the other point here. Well, the y is 74, and so 5 times 5 times 5 is 125. 
Five times five is 25. Plain five is five. Um, like that, and then two to the third is eight, and squared is four, and just two, and D equals 50. Very tricky. And then lastly, negative one to the third is negative one. It's negative one squared is positive one, and regular negative one, and then D, and then 80. Okay, so what they've given us with four points is what we need to be able to find four unknowns, that we're looking for this A, B, C, and D. They've given us a point, set of points, all of which are X comma Y, and together we've been able to see this four, these four equations with these coefficients equals these constants. Well, if we just rip the coefficients off and solve uh, uh, as a system in a matrix, we can say, well, 216, 36, 6, 1, 38, 125, 25, 5, 1, 74, 8, 4, 2, 1, 50, negative 1, 1, negative 1, 1, 80, that if I R R E F that matrix, then I will get uh, w ones on the diagonal, zeros all around, and, oops, too soon, and then over here I will get negative 2, 15, negative 19, 44. So there I have solved for A, B, C, and D, meaning that those points go through this polynomial with negative 2 and 15 and negative 19 and 44. That if I make that equation, it will go through those four points. And this really is what the uh, calculator is doing with cubic reg. It's just doing it a little bit with more wiggle room. So, let's recap. We said you could multiply factors to build a polynomial. They could occur more than once, which is called multiplicity, and then that means near that solution, the polynomial will behave like that term to that power. You could solve these by the calculator, either by looking for the third diff for a cubic equation, or by using cubic reg for a cubic equation, or you could make a matrix out of the possibilities. So there are lots and lots and lots of ways to build polynomials, which is why they get used so much in real life to model data. So we will practice more of this in class, and I will see you soon. All right, you got my face, you got the volume. This is recording. Yes, dear, I want you to go full screen. Okay. I should check what in the world he has them do in 15. This could be totally useless. You would hate yourself. In 15, three, oh no, that is so stupid. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Nope, you're totally doing it right. 15-3.